Hello, and welcome to today's episode of our new mini documentary series, Through the Artist Eyes. I am Maria Ramirez Trillo, Associate State Director for Community Outreach for the AARP Arizona State Office. Join AARP Arizona and the Southern Arizona Arts and Cultural Alliance as we enjoy an up-close weekly interview with Tucson artists from different disciplines with global influence. In this four-part series produced by Ink and Staples, you'll meet an accomplished clay sculptor from Japan, a visual spice artist from South Africa, and an up-and-coming painter from Mexico, and a puppeteer whose credits span from Hollywood to the Chicago Opera. Each week, we'll learn about their creative process as they share the artistic ideas that motivate and inspire them. Artist Javi Valenzuela has always been proud and vocal about the true inspiration and motivation behind his paintings, his mother, Lulu. We will sit down with Javi Valenzuela to discuss his late mother and how he infuses her memory into each and every painting. Moving from the border towns of Mexico to the Southwest United States, Javi's mother helped kindle his passion for the art by encouraging him to draw actors and celebrities from her favorite magazines. His skills quickly grew from simple sketches to the extremely color-infused brush strokes that have now become his signature style. You can view all episodes at the AARP Arizona YouTube channel and see upcoming events at the AARP Virtual Community Center. Let's get started. When I was a kid, I always had that natural talent for drawing, just anything art. I would say low writing was a big part in the 90s. And just seeing the drawings on the, on the cars, the paintings, it kind of took on from that, that Chicano art style of painting. But I would say my mom was my main inspiration that triggered my first times uh, drawing. She would sit me down in the living room and she will get um, um, pencils, uh, markers from her prayers. And um, she would, uh, there was a magazine called TV y Novelas, and she would go through it and she'd be like, uh, draw me this guy. The way she inspired me with my art and the way she, she felt about my art, I would say uh, she absolutely, uh, absolutely loved it. She, no matter where she went, she would always pull out little drawings that I would do when I was a kid and show it off to the teachers, to like her friends. And when she passed, you know what, left a big void. It was already like years of me not painting, not drawing, but it kept calling me because I remember my mom always wanted me to continue that. And when she passed away, I picked up the paintings and stuff like that. And one of the things that it has affected me was, um, how I say the simplest thing is, when I did my first few paintings and I realized how good they looked, she's no longer there for me to take a tour. I don't, <laughs> That's the one thing that I, that I got missing, is her facial expression. I want to see it. And I see everybody's and all my followers and people from Facebook, you know, say that I inspire them. And so I believe it. I, like, I can see that, okay, perhaps I got talent in this, but I just got that missing. It's her. I want to see her face, and I'm never going to see it. She always wanted me to paint her a Virgen of Guadalupe. And when she passed, well, I kind of kept, it was already kind of close to uh, Dia de los Muertos. So I decided to paint the Virgen of Guadalupe. And I was actually painting her like with a normal face and you know, how, how you see it. But then I, I kind of like got angry at myself to think that now that she's gone, now I'm doing it. I saw like the irony in that, like I can't like, why am I doing it now? So to honor her, since that's her painting, I decided to do the, the Virgen de Guadalupe like a Katrina, meaning her face paint, like Day of the Dead. I decided to post it on Facebook. You know, it was normal. I only had my, just my friends, not, not followers at how I do now. I started getting some like, uh, like messages saying that that was very disrespectful. And that kind of like, it felt, I felt sick to my stomach. But then for each, like say three, four comments that they will make, you have a whole crowd, a whole sea of people defending me. 
that I never met. Then I, like I could see now what art is, that it has a mix of emotions. You're gonna, you cannot uh, please everybody. You're gonna have people that absolutely hate it and they'll go out of their way and let you know. But then you have a big crowd defending you. That was one of the main, uh, I would say moments where I realized that okay, I'm triggering something with these paintings. My mother absolutely hated tattoos when I was a kid. Back in the days, the uh, paletero mans, the ice cream mans will come around and they will sell gum, 25 cents each. And they'll have a little stick on tattoo. So I will buy at least two, three dollars worth of these little candies. I'll take them out and I'll put them all lower me. And my mom will spank me, scrub them off, and like send me to the room. <laughs> but then the next week come around and I will do it all over again. But when it came down, because my mom uh, was a very religious lady, but she was always open-minded. And I would get uh, some of my mom's friends and her sisters that were tolerated. Hey, the tattoos are a sin. And my mom would actually defend me. She'll go, oh, you know what? It comes to a point that is about being a good person. That if God can't see past the tattoos and see the heart of my son, then that's not my God either. In all my paintings, I put Lulu. That's the nickname that we will have for my mom. So every painting has Lulu above it. My mom always felt like she never accomplished anything. Like she crossed, she came into this country, you know, for us, typical for us to have a better future. I remember she was at Home Interior. And I know a lot of people don't remember that, but Home Interior, we had to go door to door and she will, you know, show a magazine of products, new, uh, like for remodeling houses and stuff like that. It kind of hurts me because I remember her saying that she never, she never, she thought she never accomplished much. So, I mean, I feel a lot of these like emptiness, like uh, broken promises now that I can no longer do. But this is something that I can actually, I think, you know, she'll be everywhere. She'll travel this time.